Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, Hurricane Track here. Monday now, the 16th of September, 2024. September 16th is one of those days that kind of lives in hurricane infamy. We think about Ivan 20 years ago, Floyd back in 1999, and uh, we had Florence, which was the 14th of September with a landfall. But Florence, six years ago, causing tremendous flooding, even days after landfall. And then today, potential tropical cyclone 8, making landfall in southeast North Carolina, northeast South Carolina. Unbelievable flooding happening, three feet of water down in Carolina Beach. Excellent coverage of all of that on Fox Weather and people, of course, on social media. Really underscoring two things. One, who cares what we call these things? Our labels do not matter. The impacts are what matter. And two, continuing to underscore the importance of understanding that rain is a significant impact over and over again i say that we have to drill that into our heads all of us and ptc8 you know it was almost a tropical storm structurally whatever none of that matters what matters are the businesses that have the flooding the residents that are stuck in carolina beach the school system here in the hanover county schools that are dealing with the backlash for not calling school last night It is a real mess, and this thing didn't even have a name, air quotes there. Wow. A lot to talk about, though. We have PTC-8, and then we need to watch the Western Caribbean, as we have been talking about, starting to see signals of potential trouble over there over the next 10 days. So let's get started. First, here's the remnants of Gordon out here, tropical depression. I say remnants of no issue whatsoever, so we just will bypass it. Here is PTC-8 now inland over southeast North Carolina, northeast South Carolina. Let's look at the radar on this because it's still rather impressive. This next band that's coming in here, that's going to rock Carolina Beach in just a little bit. Let's zoom in on this. Carolina Beach receiving uh, several inches of rain, over a foot of rain, I do believe, from looking at some of the gauges around the area. Tweets and posts from the National Weather Service, Wilmington. And then you've got this band that's getting ready to come into that area. And uh, Fox Weather's Brandy Campbell down there. She's getting ready to get hit again with this band that's going to come through. Extremely heavy rain and embedded lightning and even the threat of a brief tornado in parts of Brunswick and uh, Columbus counties in southeast North Carolina. So why wasn't this named more than just a potential tropical cyclone? As they say, it's complicated, but by and large the main uh, issue was with it not forming into a tropical storm. It ran out of time. And the overall structure... Uh, was part of it as well. The atmosphere just wasn't quite lined up enough for this to get the classification of tropical storm. But again, who cares in this situation? It was the impacts that we were most concerned about. And I even mentioned on Fox Weather yesterday that I thought the biggest impact would be rain. That's not hard to see when you understand it's not going to be very windy, not going to have time to build up a big storm surge. So what is the impact? Well, it is a potential tropical cyclone And those two words, tropical cyclone, are your biggest clues. Heavy, very heavy, extreme rain. That's baked into these no matter what. And here it is unfolding across southeast North Carolina especially. And uh, we're going to have to deal with this for the next several hours. And then it's going to make its way into the sand hills and eventually parts of the triangle of North Carolina, maybe even points west along I-40. So be ready. You know what to do. Don't be driving around in this mess if you don't have to. A very changeable dynamic situation here in my neck of the woods is where I live. So here's what it looks like on the Weather Service homepage. I wanted to show you all the action over here on the southeast coast of North Carolina and parts of extreme northeast South Carolina. I was interested in the river flooding potential, so I jumped over to the river lakes and rainfall part on the National Weather Service homepage. If we zoom in down here, we can check on some of these gauges. The uh, gauge down in Wilmington right at the Cape Fear River could reach minor flooding, a couple of high tide cycles down the road. Uh, We'll see about that. And then up here in Burgaw, along the northeast Cape Fear River, the potential for some rapid rises, but not even, hopefully, reaching moderate stage. And you can find this yourself, by the way, over at the weather.gov homepage. All you have to do is go to weather.gov, like that right there. Click on Rivers, Lakes, Rainfall. I'll highlight it for you. Click on that. And that takes you to what I just showed you. It's interactive. You can zoom in, drill down, and find out the information you 
need to know. Very, very helpful because tropical cyclones bring heavy rain guaranteed each and every time. Here's what it all looks like on satellite, and I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to show you a couple things here in the next couple of minutes that's, to me, meteorologically very, very fascinating when we talk about the seedlings for these systems. So what do we notice out here? Well, here's Gordon, what's left of it. Strong upper-level winds going right across this system, shearing it apart, separating the low-level center from the deep thunderstorms. We call that shear, and in this case, it decouples the system, and it cannot align, and it generally falls apart. It weakens. Elsewhere across the Atlantic, tropical wave coming off here. Here's your intertropical convergent zone and the monsoon trough, etc. This whole area, for the most part, I'm not even worried about it. Yes, something random could come off. You know, like we saw in 2016, the seedling that eventually gave us Matthew came off in late September, and we all saw how that turned out in the first week of October. But by and large, let's use red out here, marking it up like a school teacher would. Let's use, let's get out the red marker. I'm going to just say this is all pretty much closed in terms of any potential impacts. Something could still sneak through, but by and large, this is not what I'm concerned with. This area over here is very much what I'm concerned with, and I'm going to show you why. I've got the evidence to prove it, as they say. But I also want to point out something really neat here. So this is uh, the energy associated with PTC-8. There's another spin going on right here and some convection. And there's another little area of energy right over here. And we can see this very detailed on my favorite analyst you know, analysis graphic uh, that, that we've got at our fingertips here. And that's the vorticity signature. Look at this. This is really remarkable. Here's one area, two areas, three, four, and five. This is way up in the North Atlantic. Don't worry about that. And then, of course, here is Gordon. That's number six. If the atmosphere were cooperating better, probably a couple of these would have congealed already and more so than they are. And we might have two or three named storms going at the same time. So it's interesting to see these pieces of energy sitting out here. And they literally look like grapes on the grapevine, right? Any, any kind of fruit on a vine analogy, that's what this looks like. But it also shows you how the atmosphere right now is just not conducive for these systems to fully blossom. We have too much sinking air, generally speaking, the suppressed phase of the Madden-Julian oscillation, the strong wind shear down there separating Gordon from its deep thunderstorms, and we are not seeing an atmosphere conducive to getting strong systems. Uh, and even Francine, as mighty as it was, and it certainly brought some impacts to Louisiana and elsewhere, it too did not reach what we have seen these hurricanes reach in the Gulf of Mexico in recent years. And these are certainly good things that goes without saying, but it just shows you that this whole area through here is just not very favorable right now at the peak of hurricane season, something that none of the experts, me included, saw coming weeks ago and months ago. We didn't think that it would be this way. Uh, and just goes to show you, sometimes we get it wrong. But in that same breath, I lied, I took another breath, but in that same breath, we do have PTC-8 that has brought substantial impacts to a very small area of southeast North Carolina. All disasters are local, and that's what we need to think about. Okay, think about, I say this often, be selfish about it. How will this impact me and the people in Carolina Beach and elsewhere? They're finding out exactly how something without even an official name, it's not Helene, it's not Isaac or whatever, it's PTC-8, it's a scientific classification, and it didn't matter. It's still causing tremendous impacts. Now, why am I concerned going forward? I want to lay this out because I'm not here to scare you or to what they say, fear monger or whatever. I want to present the evidence. What do we know? We know it's this is from 15th of September, so it's you know, a day old. It's always a day behind. And this is the anomalies map. And this is our area of most concern all through here. And the water temperatures are still significantly above normal in pretty much every location, except right against the shelf water here of the southeast and parts of the northwest gulf owed to the disturbed weather we've seen through here before Francine and now in the wake of Francine. But the eastern gulf, all of the Caribbean and the southwest Atlantic, 
all still running one to two degrees Celsius above the long-term average, and the La Nina is definitely starting to come on stronger, and we are only in the mid part of the month. So this is very important. I want you to listen to me. Even though we, and I'm certainly included with this because I have talked about the hyperactive season in many a video going back to the spring. I'm not going to pretend that I didn't say it. We thought that it would be far busier up to this point than it has been. But that does not mean that the rest of the season will go the same way. You understand that? And that is mainly because of what we see in front of us, what we see coming in the guidance over the next few weeks with more rising motion from the Madden-Julian oscillation working its way into the basin, and the models are starting to pick up on it, and I'll show you that in just a moment. So the evidence is there that we cannot just rest back and say, well, we all blew it, we all being the people just like me. I don't make forecasts. I certainly talk about those forecasts, but I was echoing what we thought the evidence was earlier, and uh, we were wrong up to that point in terms of the overall hyperactivity. What we weren't wrong about were the impacts, and you think about it, all these systems that made landfall barrel, devastating across the Caribbean, uh, and then of course in the Texas, Houston area, then we had Debbie, not quite devastating, but certainly pretty high impact, Ernesto making landfall over Bermuda, that counts, and now Francine. So four major land impacts, and we're only up to the mid part of September, with the potential of a very heavy backloaded season remaining, that we could still get 8 to 12 named storms additionally. That does not seem out of the realm of possibility, and where will most of that happen? Probably right through here. Could get a couple out here in the open Atlantic, that wouldn't shock me either, but I am most concerned about this area right through here, and last I checked, that's where pretty much all of us live, west of 60 degrees longitude. Let's just make it very general. Everybody that's probably watching this video lives in this area, right? A majority of the people. So the water temperatures are still there. We're still in peak season, and the models are starting to respond. This is the GFS from the 12Z run today. There are those pieces of energy, and uh, this might be the leftovers of Francine, now that I think about it. Uh, there's PTC8. This is nothing, this is nothing, this is nothing, in terms of officially named or whatever. But just look at all that energy sitting up there in the subtropics. Really fascinating to see from a meteorological perspective. Now, I want to start watching this area because the pattern is going to get favorable. That eventually we're going to get the piling up of air down here, what we call convergence. The Madden-Julian oscillation is going to set in. The upper levels are going to become more favorable. And climatologically speaking, the end of September through October, that's when we would naturally be watching this area and this area and this area. That's what happens naturally. So let's see what happens. Let's see what the GFS has shown. Let's take this out to one week. I think that's fair. And uh, we can see what happens with our systems. This is five days out. And so far, not much. Just a weak little area of vorticity there. Nothing to worry about here. But you're just starting to see. Look at this curvature down here. That is that air starting to pile up. That Central American gyre almost. Eh, how that's officially defined, not sure. But we're starting to see the signs just five days out. Let's move this out another couple of days and you can see the makings there. This is six days and then finally by day seven the energy starts to congeal down here in the Northwest Caribbean Sea counterclockwise turning in the low levels. That's that low level vorticity. The satellite imagery a week from today should look really interesting down here if this is going to come to fruition. We will be able to see it in real time day by day by day. Does this evolve as the model is suggesting? And just to show you, let's go back to time zero. The Canadian, the CMC, that is also suggesting something happening down there. It's a little bit faster. Take this out to a week's time as well. There you go to 168 hours. This is more organized, maybe feeding back on that thunderstorm activity or convection as we call it a little bit over. I, I don't know. We don't know. It's the future. Uh, maybe the Canadian's right on the money. But look, there's the Canadian. There's the GFS. Both of them have some disturbed weather in that part of the Caribbean going out a week. What about the Euro? Let's check out the Euro. This is from the run overnight. And at the, um, 
Let's see, we don't want it. That's 12z today. We want to go 0z last night. Let's take this out to a week and see if it matches up. Not nearly as much. The euro always seems to play catch up. I'm going to be honest with you. And just in this case, it has this huge area of energy down here and doesn't focus it. But two of the major models, and the Canadian has certainly performed well over the last several years, and the GFS, Global Forecast System, and their ensembles are all hinting at, and even the Euro ensembles, something to watch for down here. You will see me mentioning it. You will see other people that we trust and follow on social media mentioning this stuff as well. All right, a couple other pieces of commentary for you here. This is where having our partnership with QuickDam really gives me an opportunity to talk about them again and a very important reason what we saw here with PTC 8 underscores the need to be prepared the folks in Carolina Beach and elsewhere and anybody that was caught by the flooding from Francine going out ahead of time to Home Depot to Lowe's and all the different places that you can pick these products up you can order them off of Amazon and having boxes of these quick dams a few hundred dollars ahead of time and I know for some people a few hundred dollars is too much they just don't have it I get that but for those that can do it this can literally save you hundreds of thousands of dollars in damage to your property because these bags are water activated they're easy to set out you don't have to fill sandbags you don't have to stress over it you know the heavy rain is coming you activate these things you get them ready and again PTC 8 really really I'm going to just kind of harp on this for a moment, underscoring, there's that word, the understanding of impacts. We have to understand that. You said, what is a PTC-8? What's tropical storm mean? Forget all of that. Ask yourselves, how will this impact me? And I'm telling you, it's great to have a partner like QuickDam that can help you to get ready in the future. This is their website, and you can see where you can order their different products up here uh, and the different products that they have. I'll put a link to this as well. The documentary, as I talked to you about the, uh, at the beginning, the Hurricane Highway Season 1. Remember at the beginning of the video? Yeah, it's been a while since we started this video. I'll put a link to all of this in today's description to keep you informed and ready to go and to look back at some history of where we got started more than 20 years ago. Boy, Ivan, 20 years ago, hard to believe. All right, that's it for me for today. Have a great rest of your Monday and a great rest of your week ahead. Of course, I'll be back all week with updates, so we'll be on top of this. We've got to watch that area as we start to get into the second half of September and beyond. From all of us at the community here of Hurricane Track, we appreciate you tuning in. I'm Mark Suddeth. I will talk to you again some more tomorrow.